So welcome to today's stream. Today we're going to do uh, line buffers, variable line buffers for um, for our uh, kernel. Um, so here's our grayscale. We have I have registered a valid signal so that it lines up with all the signals and the outputs there. So now we're going to create a new structure, a new source file. Create a file, and we're just going to call it line buff. Um, HDL, uh, e. I'm going to clock in. I'm definitely going to have a bus in. And this is just going to be what the RGB value, or the gray. And then we're going to have an out, which is going to be a massive bus. Offer a hand um, window. Okay. Um, so this operator it has an input of a window, right? The window coefficients will be from somewhere else. The window. So what this the line buffer? Copy that. Um, line buffer. So line buffer is only going to operate on a window. I assume there's gonna be a valid in and we'll send a valid to the other thing we're gonna to have to keep track of the valid, which is kind of annoying. I don't really like probably one thing that's nice about VHD or the HLS is that it handles all of these uh all these systems very easily. So we're gonna need a signal. It's gonna be uh the window reg and that's just gonna be yeah the and then we need some line buffers we're going to do assume that line is 1920 so let's go back to here where we have go here, um, change that constant value. So it's going to be line size. Um, And what we're gonna want, we're gonna be 19, 19, 19, and 20 minus one. Um, and it's gonna be um, line size. Little T line. And then we're gonna need to create a new one, which is going to be like the array of them. So something like that. be T line and we're gonna go to uh, line buffers and it's going to be uh, zero two Oh, we also need to register the signals. Oh, it's going to be slightly annoying. Hmm. 
Okay. Um, okay. So other than that, we're gonna need two variables, right? We're gonna need, first we gotta create the line buffer. So signal line buffers is t underscore line buffers. Oh. And then we're gonna need y x count unsigned is thirty one down to thirty two or zero, and it will determine what is supposed to need for. It. And I believe so. If we think about the HLS, we're just writing to one. We're just writing one va va variable, and then we're reading from the other four. So Is there a mod here? There we go. Mod. Uh, that could be interesting. Would it be best just to um, have another counter? Yeah, the Y count will only need to go up to. Um, I mean, we could try, we could do that. A sub y count. So what? again in process. So if rising edge of clock. And, and if so, first we want to get everything loaded, and window um, window of in this situation it's five. We're just going to go ahead and write this up like this. It is going to be. Gray window, the window six window. Oh, well, in that case, it's going to be uh, twenty four. Gonna be five times five minus one. And so then I'm gonna take line buffer of sub y count of uh, x count, right? Uh, this might get complicated. I don't know how we're necessarily going to do these line buffers like this.
It has to be like a two underscore integer. Okay. Um. So then window. Then window four times five minus one needs to be be coming from these ones. I mean, we could try to do a register for each of them. Have them revolve. Be independent of each other. A good question. I mean, we should be able to read from all of them. Oh, we could just do like an if statement if it's not that one. So... If sub y count does not equal zero, right? We can make a for loop of this. Then and if See if we try something like that. Let's see. Not equal. Yeah. Definitely do a for loop for this, but right now let's hard code it. I'm curious. Four. Four. Three. Okay, and then we gotta shift the windows over. Oh, but they change which ones it matters. Uh, yeah, this is not as easy as you would think. Reassigning that one. I mean, we could do it based upon every single one.
Yeah, I think we want to do a sub body count array. Oh, that just kind of hurts my head. So. What we want to do is we want to say type kernel size of unsigned maybe 31 down to zero not going to change much sub y And we would have to assign it. Maybe a reset value or something. We have to reset in here and assign it. I'm thinking like, you know, we'll just do uh, like that. Right. These numbers will increase independently. Let's go. Something like that. Then we would need to shift the window over Matt, that stuff. And yeah, let's just see what that produces. And we can just say what x count equals x count plus one. Um, if X count was nineteen nineteen. Or we'll say uh line size. Then and if I count Y count and if Y count equals 1080 minus 1 equals 1080 minus 1. Um, I count equals zero. I also do a count and we'll just do others. Easier than trying. Okay. Now what we need a for. I want to do a for loop here, for loop I in I in zero.
Um, so zero to kernel size minus one. And we're going to, what are we going to do? We're going to say loop and loop. Okay. Loop and loop. We're just going to say what sub count i. Count i plus count i plus one. Um, and if sub count i is equal to kernel size minus one, then and if just gonna make it equal to zero. Okay, so let's see what happens when we try to synthesize it. Um, yeah, let's run synthesis. I'm curious to what resources it will try to use. You may not be inferring the BRAM correctly, or maybe unhappy with us. We're only using a portion of the window, which is okay. We'll deal with the other portion of the window later. See if we can figure out if it's going to use any BRAMs. Collaboration failed. Oh. Yep, that would be a bad one. On synthesis. Okay. Guys, I probably won't I'll probably have to think about this for a while. I didn't realize this was going to be so complicated. I thought the line buffer would be pretty straightforward, but it's 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 more complicated than I expected. Mostly because we have these rotating line buffers. Um So it says 3D RAM line buffering reg for this pattern pattern configuration is not supported. This will most likely be implemented in registers. Be a lot of registers. Um, we may have to change it up. May have to initialize the arrays differently in like a for generate loop so they're as though they're completely separate from each other and do kind of a dedicated read and write to each of them. But that would be, I guess we could just write to an array and then index into that array appropriately and then output it to an array. Yeah, maybe. Let's see what this does. Yeah. So, if we want to do this properly, we're going to have to infer the line buffers individually and do the proper read and write to them. Uh, maybe we could do a read pass through thing. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of like a reading to a single address with a byte enable on it. I could see that. Or we could just do individual bytes. Uh, 
Um, yeah, this is going to be a little bit tough getting this line buffer. Um, I'm going to have to sit and think about this one. Because if you think about it, um, so we have each line buffer. We're going to read the lines. So it's always the kind of the same row, right? So it's going to be the same address across all the same line buffers. So we'll read that in. And then we'll save it to kind of an array. And one value in that array will be ignored. And the other four values will be, and we'll have the indexes for, to the correct position in the windows. And there'll be one write per cycle. And that write will be whichever register um, index zero is on is where the write enable will go. So kind of like a one hot state machine, a one hot selection for choosing which array to write to, because we're always only writing to one array and reading from four, but we could just read from five while we're at it. How long is this going to take? Hmm. Okay. Hopefully this finishes so we can see if um, line buffers were used correctly. Taking a long time would suggest it's not going to work out. Uh, A little bit concerning, but we'll have to deal with it. Ah, finish soon. Okay. So, we can make some notes. Make some notes on this guy. Let's make some notes, right? So we need a four generate for each uh, line buffer. The idea I'm thinking, right, is uh, we just create a four generate loop. I'll need to free up on that. And it's just basically we're going to have a process. It's going to be the claw. And then basically we're going to have, you know, rising, edge, whatever. Edge clock. Um, we're going to have if, a right, if read enable. And then we're just going to uh, do line buffer it can be one line buffer for each of them um line buffer um and it's going to be at the at the x count we're going to write or read x count and if read enable line buffer x count and if we do this, this should probably create the appropriate DRAMs. And then we're gonna load that into an array. So line 
mail lineba out of at that specific that specific item. And this is going to be the input of gray, never changing. And then when we then when we want to uh, connect a window, right? We're going to have our indexes. So we're going to have a window. What like uh, uh, three, four. They have to so it's, it's indexable like this. And this is going to be um, line buff out, and but it's going to be yeah line buff out, but it's going to be of uh, the sub y count register one because zero one two three, and then we would do this. Like this, and that should work. Getting it to the window, and then we just gotta create a for loop to push the window. I might change the window addressing so it looks like this. Yeah, yeah, I think that should work. Um, So yeah, that that's really high. We're not using any VRAMs, it looks like. Okay. So we can do line buffers like that. And do that. And then we'll just create a for loop for the window. Um just do like a for loop i comma j and then we'll just have like window window i j is window i j plus one plus one and that should be i think sufficient for a line buffer okay okay i see a little bit more of how we could possibly do this and parameterize it so it can be any size we just need to make sure that the structure inference is correct enough that a vram memory is implemented instead of uh right here where we have uh twelve thousand registers I'm not sure if that's going to work well. We'll see. Okay. Well, I think I'm going to stop the stream for here today. I know we didn't get very far, but um, that's kind of HDL development. I think we have a, I'll have a better vision of doing the line buffer next time, and then we need to start calculating the X and Y values. And not worry about edge cases for the moment. That can be something if we want to look at that later. Okay, well, thank you. Um, I will we'll review this on Friday and we'll try to get it so in first BRAMs instead. Thank you and goodbye.